Your TCG program may not be suitable for certain members of the family. In fact, it may not be suitable for any members of the family. Therefore, we urge you to change the channel immediately. Thank you. Okay, guys, stand by. We're about 15 seconds from here. Camera one, are you ready? Has that pizza come yet, uh, man? No, no. Camera two, are you ready? I'm smoking some stuff here. Where's camera three? Camera I'm on the other camera. And audio appears to be ready. Tape is rolling. We stand by it. to track oh, tape. I'm about to get off my cable, And let's see, will we're ya? about 15 to wait. Stand by to go. Somebody cue him. Wait a minute. We're not on there yet. We're what on the pain? air. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, it's the Bill Tush Birthday Special. Now, here's the star of tonight's show, Bill Tush. I'd like to welcome you to the Bill Tosh Birthday Special. The reason for our show, in case you don't know, is to celebrate the anniversary of our early morning news here on Channel 17. Three years ago, we started it on this date. And tonight, we're on a little bit earlier trying to present some of our past bits and some new things we hope to entertain you with. You know, we have a unique brand of comedy here at Channel 17. And how we ever uh, first uh, came around to it is a... Strange thing, you know, we found it to be totally original, all new stuff, things that have never been seen before. Uh, movies for years and years had the old slapstick routine, and they go from one slapstick routine to the other. We don't do that. All our comedy is brand new. We have a giant staff of writer. He weighs somewhere between 300, 400 pounds, and he keeps things rolling. And I hope you'll enjoy our happy kind of original humor here on the Bill Tush Anniversary Show. So for the next half hour, just sit back, we'll have some fun. This is the man, the man known as the Weather Wizard. He's the man who predicted cold weather last winter and school closings in Buffalo, New York after 15 inches of snow fell on that northern city. And now the Weather Wizard is a part of the WTCG News Team. He's come out of retirement to bring the Wizard's way of predicting the weather to you. The Weather Wizard, making his first Atlanta television appearance next. Well, I called the TV doctor. He came over right away. He said to see what he can do. He had to hold my TV way. I told him, if you don't get the picture, I'm going to do some work on you. And here once again is Bill Tushy. Tushy. Oh, Tush, Tush. Hi, I'm Robert Vaughn. Now, here's Bill Touch. No, Teach. Bill Touche. Hi, this is Fanny Flagg, and now back to Bill Touch. Touch. Touched. Touch. Touched. 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 Bill Touched. Tick. Back to Tick. But a bit. What is your name? Bill was, uh, was, uh, 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 uh Touch Touch. Hello, I'm Frank Blair. And I never miss him because I never watch him. Bill Tush with the new, uh, t uh, Tucci. Bill Tucci. Good evening. Hope you're doing okay this evening. As you saw just a few moments ago, the weather wizard is now a part of WTCG's news team. Jim Robinson is his name. He's made it big in New York, Cleveland, and a few other big, big cities we just don't have time to mention. Jim has been voted most correct weather person in a in the country several times. He holds the Barometric Beanie, a cherished award given by the Weather Society, plus numerous other awards. We here at Channel 17 coax Jim out of retirement because we really wanted to have him here with us. Needless to say, the very big money contract uh, also made the offer more enticing. What more can I say except we are extremely elated to have with us 
the guy who is known as the weather wizard, Jim Robinson. Now let's turn it over to Jim and find out what probably is going to be the best forecasted weather in the city. Jim, welcome aboard. Thank you very much, Bill, and good evening, weather fans. Well, tonight we've got... It just tickles my shorts to introduce the following group. Here now is the Mason-Dixon line. If you're tired of your head and the way it looks, <laughs> then listen up. An American neurologist from the University of Cleveland says that head transplants are in the near future. Professor Robert White, speaking in Naples, Italy, said the members of his medical team at the Cleveland University already carried out transplant experiments with monkeys. Professor White said that the operations could be likely within a year, but he really sees no use to it. Now it's time for Losing with Lola with Lola Crayola. Good evening. This is Lola Crayola with the show that shows you that a sensual, healthy body can be one of your greatest assets. Now, you'll remember last week that we were doing exercises for the thighs, the hips, and the tum-tum. Well, we're going to continue those exercises this week. So, ladies, get your chairs, put your hand on your chair, arch your back, tuck in your seat, and one, two, three, four, five, come up, six, Come up, seven, and eight. And for the next exercise that we're going to do, we're going to do crawlovers. What you do is stand with your feet slightly apart, put your, arch that back, tuck in your tummy, and toes out, heels out, toes, heels, toes, heels. Keep going all the way, and now you're going to sit. You're going to sit. Now, what we're going to do for our last exercise this evening are sit-ups. So feet together, lie down, hands out front, and one, one, one. Hurry up, get me off me. Good evening, ladies. And the space agency has released a vivid new color picture taken by the Viking 1 robot showing the sky over Mars is pinkish, orange, and the Martian surface is red with an orange cast. Isn't this fun? Proof again that I'll do anything for a buck. Now here's a good friend of mine, and I hope a good friend of yours too, from WQXI Radio, Willis the Guard. This here's a story about a truck driving man. It goes something like this. Gonna drive my truck all over the world. Gonna drive my truck all over the world. Drive my truck, ship them gears, drink some beer and ship them gears. Gonna drive my truck all over the world. Drive 
drank some beer, shipped them gears and drank some beer. Gonna drive my truck all over the world. How you like it so far, Bill? Nice? This here's what's called a bridge part. See, I don't sing here. I just walk around, do whatever I want to do until my part comes back in. See, this big time showbiz folks does that an awful lot, you understand? Don't mess with me. I almost lost my place there. Cause, can't you see? Cause I might get to be a real star and come out there and see y'all someday. All right. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Now you can have this five foot three inch natural blonde with only a slight complexion problem for an evening on the town, or this macho guy with a receding hairline for your escort any night of the week. That's right, the small blonde or this slightly heavy man. It's your choice. Only two hundred and fifty dollars at unclaimed date. Um. Clay date. No excited I marry you. Hey, Bill. Financial troubles down on the farm force Timmy's family to eat Lassie. Tomorrow morning on Super 70. Happy birthday, Billy. And now a WTCG editorial by Director of Affairs Zane Hosh. Good evening. Within the next fortnight, our nation's children will be observing the Halloween festivities. Always cognizant, WTCG believes that this is the time to express our opinion about the rising incidents of crime done in the name of this revered holiday. Halloween is not an excuse for organized mischief. Indeed, it is an evolvement of this sacred ancient Moldavian holy day called All Hallows' Eve. When it is said, the souls of the dead arose from their graves, had flanged their neighbor's fram, sometimes even battling their roys. It is said that sometimes the grills from the borogros could be heard in the raftsmen's. Now, observance of these ancient holidays does not give license to these modern-day kids to fan someone's clang, nor to put butter all over their neighbor's bark net. What is happening to the kids today? Are their parents completely embaked on their frokishness? Don't dads and sons and moms and daughters ever eremote together, as in Yorish days. In closing, let me leave you with the words of a man far, far more sage than I, who once took me aside and whispered, Thank you, and good night. If you would like to reply to this editorial, send your response to Editorial Department, channels 2, 5, or 11, Atlanta, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second annual WTCG Great Hamburger Eating Contest. I'm Freddie Miller. Now, here's the man with all the bite-by-bite -bite action. Here's Gordon Soley. Thank you. Thank you very much. Truly, this is a momentous occasion here at WTCG Television. Right now, we're getting set two of these men fine for the two trophies that you see here at my desk. We have two judges, uh, Mr. J.T. Miller and Mr. L.J. Robinson, on hand to judge this contest as it takes place. And now, to introduce the contestants, back to Freddie Miller. Thank you, Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the first contender. He's from Atlanta, warming up now at a weight of 150 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Davis. Dennis Davis. And his worthy opponent, ladies and gentlemen, he is from Shambly, Georgia, checking in at a cool 160 pounds. Here's Rex Jensen. Rex Jensen. 
Uh, Rex Jensen uh, taking a nip out of that top ring rope uh, before he gets ready to sit down and uh, start in on these uh, hamburgers. Now, I might just point out that they will have four minutes to try and consume the standard size hamburger. Each contender has 25 hamburgers in front of them. Each of them has uh, soft drinks to help wash them down. Getting set to go now. All right, they're opening the soft drinks, as you can see. Tremendous manual dexterity on the part of both of these men. And uh, thinking ahead now, opening up the uh, second soft drink so that he'll be uh, ready there, flexing their muscles, waiting now for the uh, signal to start. This is a tense moment. Checking his uh, <clears throat> ivories there to make sure that uh, everything is uh, completely and ready to go. Waiting for the bell to ring. There's the bell, and the contest is underway. And uh, it is Jensen charging away now, and uh, each man has consumed approximately uh, three quarters of a uh, hamburger. They apparently the crowd now, the big chant, eat more burgers. And we'll be back with more of this action in this burger eating contest right after we pause for these words. Now, from the Bill's Dairy Kitchens. Hi, how's the Bill's Dairy Dogo? I'd like to tell you a thing or two about how I can help with your baking. Together, we can make big, lovely, melt-in-your-mouth biscuits. And besides that, oh, oh, no, oh, don't do it, no! One minute remaining, one minute remaining. And uh, Davis now having some problems. The bell has rung, the bell has rung, and Davis. And a 12. What a magnificent contest. Tremendous, tremendous hard charge by both of these men in the closing seconds of this hamburger eating contest. Well, there you have it, and of course your winner is Rex Jensen from Chambly, Georgia, and certainly an outstanding contest. Again, a pleasure to be invited along to be the commentator for this most impressive occasion. Until next time, this will be Gordon Soley saying, if you deserve a break today, how about having it your way? Tina, Mary Ann, and even Mrs. Howell are forced to hide when Gilligan wants a woman. Tuesday on Super 17. We're back over here in front of the very expensive music set, and next to me now is Bobby Bumper. You know, uh, there's a current trend going around of people doing tributes to Elvis Presley. Well, Bobby does something different. He does a tribute to Freddie Fender, the great Mexican uh, singer, and he's going to do his tribute for us here this evening. Now, Bobby, when did you first get involved in doing a Freddie Fender tribute? The time I spent in the, the Fulton County Jail, I, I, I discovered Freddie Fender, and now I'm in my room at the Y. I have a life-size poster of my, how you say, main man, <laughs> Freddie Fender, and I know all the words to both of his hit, hit, hit records. Oh, very good. Uh, do you make any kind of money off of this one? Oh, I made I made tons of money with with no talent at all. I come to this country, wonderfully land of opportunity. You know, I have my own platform shoes. I pay cash for frozen tortilla Mexican dinners. It, it's a wonderful. It's a wonderful. Um, do you consider yourself a Freddie Fender impersonator? I I am not the impersonator of Freddie Fender. Freddie is my idol. I do a tribute to him. It's obvious I do not look like Freddie Fender. I do not try to act like or talk like Freddie Fender. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to it. The Freddie Fender tribute, ladies and gentlemen, here is Bobby Bumper. Gracias, gracias. If he bring you a penny, well, I wish you for the best. Get your happiness that matters most of all. On a 
mulle nare spene se io te se ti ci puoi dare a giallare ti ho da quello ti le cancane balle e se dai ai lo lusi ti puoi tardo a palme Fish pie, silly gumbo. Gracias, yeah, yeah. amigo. Thunder tribute by Bobby Bumper. Thanks, Bob. Gracias, amigo. It was wonderful Appreciate to be here. Good luck on your ever plummeting career. One of the mornings we had our most fun was with our co-anchor dog. I remember it about a year and a half ago. Here's Rex. Ralph Nader and Ronald Reagan are complaining that the Ford campaign is not paying for political appearances by Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. There is a violation of the election law, according to Nader and Reagan. The news directors of the president's campaign says Kissinger has not made any political speeches, but has spoken only on foreign policy. Do the weather later, Rex. Ronald Reagan hopes to beat the president. <laughs> well, Rex was something else. We had a lot of fun with him. Last we heard, uh, Rex was in Chicago doing some freelance dog food commercials. There, by the way, is no truth to the rumor that Rex is the bionic dog on another network. Rex, if you're out there by any chance, you know, remember you always have a spot back here at Channel 17. In fact, you put that spot here at Channel 17. Never could get it out of the carpet. I'd like to thank you for joining us for our second birthday special and hope we can do it again next year. Have a nice night. This is your announcer, Bob Roberts, saying that I'm available for freelance announcing work. Reasonable rates and expert service, so next time you need that special voice for your commercial, call me. I'll be glad to do it. <laughs>